Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron. I hope you're having a great day or night in Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for being with us today. We're going to be looking at a question I get a ton, and I'm shocked at how divided the answer of this is. And it's, is Sibelianism, Patropassionism, and Modalism the same thing? And so the basic answer is yes. Now, it's getting taught in a lot of apostolic circles that the answer is no. Now, there's two reasons for that, and then we'll go into some subsets of those reasons as well. First is, it's kind of an ignorance of church history that people are just taking what they're being taught, and uh, sometimes by you know Trinitarians, Binitarians, whatever. And the second thing is, is we really don't have any of Sabaeus' original writings left. Maybe in the Vatican Library, buried deep underneath in the Vatican, that you'd have to get two bishops, I think, and an archbishop to recommend you only 200 people a year. And then they have runners that go into uh, every direction. I've read a wonderful book on the Vatican Library, the secret archives of the Vatican and all this. Um, but, so we don't really, we have just a very few quotes by enemies of Sibelius and then you have Hippolytus and Tertullian, basically. Um, some in Origen, but Origen was a little later than Hippolytus and Tertullian. Hippolytus and Tertullian were right there, especially Hippolytus in Rome, starting an anti-church, on what was happening in early church history. So basically, what's known as Sibelianism, all available uh, evidence is, was basically just early Christian Christianity it predated Trinitarianism, you know, before the word Trinity ever even came into existence and things such as that. It's just early Christianity, and Sibelius was a keeper or placeholder of that. But some people have come to the conclusion that he did not believe what Oneness Pentecostals believed just because of some of his illustrations about the sun, certain Greek word or two that he used and that type of thing, but I think it's very hard to thread that needle just because of the paucity of information. I think if you take a broader based view that in all probability, I should say, that Sibelianism was just representative of early Christianity. There's people out there trying to say that Praxius, Notius, Notus, and uh, Sibelius taught different things, and that Victor and uh, uh, Lutherus and Zephyrinus the modalist uh, bishops of Rome taught different things and tried to nuance it. Again, extraordinarily difficult to do when you take all the factors involved. As far, again, you've only got the very few quotations, some like Hilier Potiers and stuff, that are a couple centuries removed almost from the time. I mean, that'd be like, it's 222 now, it'd be like something out in 1822. Uh, you know, we, we just wouldn't have that historical kind of record, especially with no electronics and all this kind of stuff and uh, distances involved. Uh, Hilary Potiers would be quite a ways away. Um, so, uh, and then modalism, the reason I said there's some subsets is because there's different, see, modalism and Sabellianism and Patropassionism basically are designations that we put on different writings and belief systems of the early church, like modalistic monarchianism and stuff like that. Who's that? Harnack said that, or somebody created that terminology. Bauer, I can't remember who right now. Um, and we put that on. Now, Tertullian does come really close. If he didn't use the term patropassion, he used something very close to that, the father suffers, you know. But again, if you read Adversus Praxius, and then you read the entire Hippolytus coming against the bishops of Rome, starting an anti-church, coming against Sibelius and all that from church history, you do get the feeling, the, the overall vibe, Berilius and all this, is that they're teaching the same thing. Now, it could be, too, like within Oneness Pentecostalism, Oneness Pentecostalism is not a monolith at all. 
And as I've talked to different friends of mine, you know, what unites oneness Pentecostalism basically is a few propositions. The first proposition is that the Father is in Christ. Now, I've known some oneness Pentecostals that would not say that. They would say the Father was not in Christ. Well, really, I mean, like if you're reading Tertullian, that's really the big thing. They would say God was in Christ, Jehovah was in Christ, the Word was in Christ. They just wouldn't say the Father was in Christ. And most people would say that's because of Neoplatonic thinking, that the uh, first cause could not come in contact with his creation. And so you had to have some kind of emanation, such as the Word. But, and then within oneness Pentecostalism, so you'd have that positive affirmation, and that the Trinity was not taught in the Bible and in the New Testament, and really in the first century. And that's really all provable from... Uh, church history and especially theologians like even your Trinitarian Second Temple Jewish monotheistic teachers like your um, Hurtados and maybe Craig Evans and Daryl Bach and James D.G. Dunn and N.T. Wright to my knowledge none of them would acknowledge a pre-50 AD Trinity that it, it, they would all say objectively looking the Trinity did not exist scripturally before 50 AD and even I think it's Hurtado and maybe some others would say even after that point it was binatarianism there's no Trinitarianism and this is you get to the Council of Nicaea this is the reason that the Holy Spirit was not uh, hypostasized he wasn't um, personalized at the Council of Nicaea in 325 because you still had a large contingent of people using the term ushia, same substance. And then that the, the Holy Spirit was just the Father, some emanation of the Father. And I know the term emanation is loaded, again, back looking with Gnosticism, talking about emanations, 33 emanations, and all this. But there comes a point in time, I mean, you just try to communicate language and I do know arguments are we say there's no Trinitarian language nothing even close like with several several different terms first person second person third person uh, God the Son you know co-equal co-eternal you know on and on triune Trinity Trinitarianism uh, on and on but then we end up using you know monotheism or emanation or something like that but I think it would be first of all uh, it's less so, you know, we're using less non-biblical language. Secondly, I'm all for just using biblical language to wit God the Father was in Christ. We know of one God the Father, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. So to wit God the Father was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. To wit God the Father was uh, manifest in flesh, you know, seen of angels, uh, on and on. Um, God the Father had blood, Acts 20, 28. But God is a spirit. And so, so much of the battle between, this has been my experience, not only in almost 40 years of studying the Trinity, but in discussions with Trinitarians, especially for several years here on YouTube, is the, the, their battle is, is they would look at the humanity of Jesus, that, that God neither hungers, thirsts, the God of Israel doesn't sleep. Jesus did, so he was a man, the one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, and say that is divinity. That part that is praying is divinity. That part which is saying, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? That, that is divinity, and it's not. And even like if you read Athanasius, who's considered to be the father of the Trinity, and most theological Trinitarians, they would say, well, that's exactly right. That's the humanity of Jesus talking. And so where they would get into uh, things, they would talk about three personalities. They would say, well, person doesn't mean person, but three personalities, centers of consciousness, something in the Godhead, where we would look at all that and I wish, well, maybe I'll do a drawing sometime, that God dwelling outside the time, that he could uh, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world in this type thing, that God could speak those things that are not as though they were because he dwells not only in time in the man Christ Jesus and in uh, dealings with man, but also outside of time. So he's not bound by time in his language. Now people say, oh, it makes God alive. No, I would say that makes God God 
because he's bigger than time and so not a liar at all like it, it one of the popular things is god a ventriloquist at his baptism well absolutely not i mean i'm not even sure what you're saying there okay i, I believe in the baptism of the holy ghost okay so i think i could speak with tongues and i think somebody in china and somebody in el salvador and thousands of people simultaneously could speak in tongues all over the world and it's the same god and so and then god could also speak from heaven i don't think that requires multi-personality within the godhead i believe that's just god being god so you know again getting back to the things that unite us as oneness pentecostals is that god the father was in christ jesus and that god was god and man and that the trinity is not uh, in the bible it's a post-biblical construct of some sort and it doesn't mean i mean we love trinitarians we have a lot in common with trinitarians so often i think it was james white not long ago said 75 percent of trinitarians on the pews think like oneness pentecostals or sabellians but getting back to the subject matter at hand does sabellianism patripassianism modalism mean the same thing well again i think tertullian maybe had a misunderstanding uh, when he says the father suffers well no there's a dual nature in for lack of a better term there's the father and the son biblical term that uh, you have the father who's invisible and the son who's the visible that's what victor the bishop of rome described it and so even amongst uh oneness pentecostals you would have a differentiation on the subject of the word what is the word you know and uh, was the word the visible or the invisible? Because it makes someone this Pentecostals uncomfortable thinking that somehow Trinitarianism, when it's not, if God is invisible, the image of the invisible God, that there had to be something visible for uh, things to worship and interact with. But I don't think that that, in, but the word is God. The word was with God and the word was God. You know, such is your thoughts. I understand logos means uh, thought, plan, mind, action. And just as foundation or whatever, the, just as your thoughts are with you, but they are you as well, I, I would say that. But then they would say, well, the, but the word is personalized. Yeah, because it's God. And then also because it became flesh in the son and it was the father because and this is where john 1 1 trinitarians have a very difficult time with that because in my discussions with them they're referring to it as this uh, trinitarian proof text and i'm saying well define god in john 1 1 and the thing is they have to say god means different things in john 1 1 because if you say in the beginning was god excuse me in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god if you say well in in john 1 1 god means trinity okay so in the beginning was the word and the word was with the trinity and the word was the trinity they're like well no so at a certain point well it means father okay in the beginning was the word and the word was with the father and the word was the father well no 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 and so they have to say well we god means two different things and it's like was well, there any evidence linguistically or anything that god you know theos changes meaning there and obviously is there modifiers is there something singular plural and, and the answer is obviously no and so that's where they really get into a, a pickle so to speak you know and the word was tabernacled among us the word was made flash and tabernacled among us but uh so there is differences of opinion upon oneness pentecostal so it could be some of that with Sabaeanism, Patripassianism, Modalism, and again, most of that self-designations that we're looking in the uh, to the past, putting these designations and modifiers. But overall, if you read it, in all probability, they were all some form of oneness, oneness belief systems. And then you'd have to go into the, were they Pentecostal? And all that's a discussion for another time. But uh, there is a lot of evidence. Yes, I would say Bill Chalfant was the world's leading scholar on Sabellian. If there was somebody better, I don't know them. So God, maybe Schleiermacher, but anyhow, God bless. We love you. Thanks for being with us. We'll talk with you later. And uh, hit subscribe, bell notification. Bye. God bless you.